everyone, it's Maki here. Today's program will contain spoilers for the movie Gundam Seed Freedom. If you prefer to watch the movie without any prior information, I recommend skipping this program. In Japanese theaters, the director Mitsuo Fukuda and the voice actors have been giving introductory speeches. It's an event that also serves as a thank you for the movie's impressive box office performance. We will be analyzing the content discussed during these days' speeches. Have you clicked the subscribe button yet? I will continue to share the charm of the Gundam series with everyone in Japan. Let's enjoy it together! As the film's story enters its second half, Lars finds herself imprisoned within the foundation. Ophi prepares several dresses for the imprisoned Lars. However, she stubbornly refuses to wear any of the dresses he has prepared for her. It seems to be one of the few forms of resistance she can muster. In the room, where Lars spends his time, one of the dresses is prepared. This can be confirmed on the movie screen. Be sure to look for it. In Ob's secret underwater base, Kira and Athran fight. This is the scene where Kira speaks honestly about what's in his heart. Arnold Newman is also present in this scene. He feels a bit uncomfortable and wonders if he should really be there. However, because the fight between Kira and Athran is so intense, he misses the opportunity to leave the room. During the scene where Kira and Athran fight, Shin tries to mediate between them. Even when he's beaten away by the two, Shin continues to stand up to them. At this point, Hiltra restrains Shin by saying, let them do what they want until they're satisfied. This role was originally intended for Mulo Flavor. However, Mu is absent due to a secret mission given by Cavalry. Therefore, Hilda took over the role. In the TV Ami seat, there is a depiction of Kiron's Ray spending the night together. This caused a lot of discussion because it was aired during the evening hours. In interviews, the staff mentioned that this scene was created because they were determined to depict the truth without deception. In fact, not only the staff but also the TV stations that broadcast the footage were cooperative with the idea that reality must be appreciated when the subject is war. It's a scene that some might want to look away from, but by boldly portraying such scenes, it was conveyed that Kiro Yamato is not a superhuman hero, but just a teenage boy. The deaths of the characters were also portrayed seriously. This includes the scene in which a girl named Elle, who gave Kira a paper flower, is engulfed in frames due to an attack by Zaft. A deliberate attempt was made to portray it so that everyone could see at the grounds that she had died. The same goes for the first episode of Sea Destiny regarding Mayu Asuka. Her arm is torn off and she falls to the ground. The TV stations were cautious about showing that arm. However, the director persevered and the scene was included. By showing a scene that clearly shows Mayu's death, she successfully gave the audience the impression of an irreversible situation. In fact, Showing a scene that does not immediately make it clear that someone is dead might make the audience wonder, could they still be alive? This is a natural result for work of fiction such as Gunnam. By clearly depicting death, the audience can understand the profound effect it has on Shin's psyche. I also have the impression that Mei Sui Nu, who appeared in Star Wars Episode 3 might still be alive. This is another directorial choice that is open to interpretation by fans. However, if Mayu's arm had not been depicted, 
I might have watched the story with the unnecessary expectation that Mayu might appear toward the end of the story. Many fans were curious about the future of Kiro and Lars. Previously, the director mentioned that Kiro and Lars are officially listed as missing in the story world. New information has been added to this. Of course, as mentioned before, this is Mr. Fukuda's personal opinion at this point. And if a sequel to the Seed series is produced, different settings may emerge after discussions with many staff members. Lars has become what is known as the last accord. Therefore, she is now at a higher risk of being targeted for assassination. This is similar to Kira Yamato, a super coordinator who is a top priority for elimination by Blue Cosmos. However, Lars, who possesses the abilities of an accord, is likely to have a high probability of detecting an assassination attempt in advance. To protect himself, Lars may practice using weapons with Kira. What kind of life? Will they lead from now on? The abilities of Anacode seem omnipotent, but they have their limits. They can read human thoughts, but only information that floats to the surface of the mind. In the scene, where the Earth Alliance's nuclear missiles are seized, Daniel makes a soldier think of the password and then reads it. Ingrid, on the other hand, was desperately hiding her romantic feelings for Ophi. The other codes did not know the Ingrid's love. Blue Cosmos does not choose its means. In the movie, they carried out an act of hiding bombs in the luggage of evacuees and causing an explosion. Placing bombs on civilians who have no malice or animosity and making them approach loss is a very typical method of attack for Blue Cosmos. Finally, regarding the benefits of movie admission, please note that this is not definitive information. Mr. Fukuda has mentioned that the main focus will be on creating bonuses involving the three protagonists Kiro, Afran and Shin. What these will be is completely unknown. It seems that they will depict content from the timeline after the story of the movie has ended. There may be three types of bonuses that will be randomly distributed, but Mr. Fukuda has expressed a desire to let fans choose freely. Of course, this is just the director's personal opinion, and how they will be distributed remains completely unclear. The creation of these bonuses seems to be a sudden decision, made in response to the movie's good box office performance. These bonuses are planned to be distributed as a final admission bonus. The project seems to continue to generate excitement. How will the freedom hijacking incident we talked about in a previous program be released? It's very exciting! Let's look forward to it! See you at the next program!